guys, this is Cindy Leach, your polymer clay tutor, and today's studio tip, I'm going to show you how to set up an art supply inventory system for your planner. Now, a little bit ago, um, I talked about um, setting up a planner for your um, crafting studio, and in the back part, I showed you um, how I inventory all my different supplies, and I'm going to show you that today, too. But one of the things that happens if you um, have a lot of art supplies, like I do, it takes, once they start piling up, it, it's a little bit hard to remember which uh, colors you have, which particular supplies you have. And so keeping track of it is a really good idea. And as I have just a little sampling of some of the pencils and inks and things that I have. And it would be very hard to remember which particular blue you had um, of any particular brand. So um, the first thing I did um, quite a while ago, as I started off with a, a system like this, and this is a really good one if you um, want to have something small and something quite simple. And all I have is just a, a blank um, little booklet where I have just put in different samples of the different paints that I have and the different pencils. All I would do is just put a blotch of the paint, the, the name of the brand, and then the color name and I did this for a whole bunch of different pages so I had sections for watercolor pencils sections for um, other types of uh, art pencils here's my Prismacolors I have a lot more than that now and that's kind of a real simple system that you can set up for all the different kinds of paints pencils that kind of thing here's my gelato pen uh, crayons that kind of thing but then when I went to a planner system, um, I decided to add planner pages and started hunting down different sections of, uh, or different printables and things online. Now I've already talked about how I've got my planner set up and everything, but in the back part here is where I have my supplies. And actually it's not taking up that much room yet. <laughs> I don't have uh, the inventory set up for every single brand or a type of pencil, but I'm working on my way. And I just wanted to show you how I've got that set up. So in a supply section at the back here, I've got my sections divided with these little uh, journaling cards. And this planner here is an A5 size, which is a pretty standard, a um, little bit larger sized planner. Um, there are smaller ones, there's bigger ones. You could do this in any size that you liked. And I just made these little dividers. So I've got my colored pencil divider here. This one says watercolor pencils. And I've got little pocket pages with different printed out charts that I found online. Now, I'm going to, on our blog at... Uh, polymerclaytutor.com. I'm going to give you the links to all the different printables that I found online. So make sure to go there if you want to figure out, uh, find out which particular ones that I um, have here. Um, now you could make your own charts if you like, but some of the companies have made up charts that you can find online. So for example, I'll just pull this one out here. This one is the Prismacolor um, chart that they have for their soft core color pencils. So these are the Prismacolor pencil, uh, pencil crayons that you would find in Michaels or just about any art store. And this is a blank chart and you can see the colors that I haven't got yet are just um, white still. And every time I buy a new pencil, I just uh, sharpen it up and color in the right section. Then every time I go into Michaels and I wanna buy um, a few pencils, um, all I do is I pull out my chart because I bring my planner with me and I just see which colors I don't have yet. Now, uh, it turns out I've got all the ones that Michaels carries. So in order to find the rest of these, I'm going to have to f look somewhere else. But this is a really great way. And, and Prismacolor is very clever. They've got a chart for every type of, of um, pencil, their crayons, their markers, their chalks, and everything. Now, some of the companies are not that smart, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you've got a whole line of colored pencils, it is very wise of you to make a 
blank color chart. Now some companies do have like a um, colored charts like for example Derwent watercolor. Now I printed this in black and white but Derwent watercolors have you know the their color charts these all look gray here but they would be the proper colors if I had printed it on a color printer but they're smarter if they would have a blank one that you could color out but it'll still work um, this one for example what I did is just printed out their chart their uh, color line and then I just colored over top of the the um, the names where um, I happen to have those particular colors now e with a watercolor pencil the pencil can look a little bit different if when it's um, when you use water on top of it so I did use my little water brush and and put water on top of those spots so that I could see what the color looked like when it was um, wet um, now some companies don't have charts at all and some um, handy bloggers have made their own charts and that's what this particular chart looks it has was done by some blogger this blogger wasn't very smart because they didn't put their name on it so i'm not sure which one this is i probably have it written down somewhere and i can add that to the list if i've got it now um there are charts for markers so these are the um spectrum noir markers um, they've got kind of a neat little hexagon chart online um, and Copic markers um, Copic doesn't have blank charts that I could find this was actually done by a blogger and this one was at uh, payperfections.com I'll give a link for that one too this one was a uh, two they Copic has so many markers I mean and this was uh, this one was done in 2012, um, but it looks to be quite current to what their line is now anyways. So, and that was the most recent chart that I could find. Um, there are, oh, here's another one here for the Prismacolor markers. And see how in this case, these ones look like little marker shapes, which was, is quite cute. Uh, neat thing to do. Um, Faber-Castell isn't very good at making charts. Um, I may go ahead and start making some of my own charts, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. Um, a great company that has done some nice charts, um, or was this done privately? No, I think this one was done by the Colorbox uh, Chalk Ink guys. But one of the things I wanted to show you is you can make your own little stamps for stamping in um, your chalks I mean your your inks and things like that so what I've done is I've got a little uh, an acrylic block that you use for um, sticking you know the clear rubber stamps to and all I've done is I've cut out a little square or a, in this case here's a little rectangular piece and I've got one on each side and I'll explain that in a second but this rectangular piece was just cut out of a piece of craft foam obviously the color doesn't matter and I just have a bunch of scraps so you can cut out whatever shape you want and you could cut a large one or you could cut a small one or whatever you want but um, I just cut a little rectangle and then I just stuck it to my acrylic block with some uh, double stick tape you could always remove it later scrape it off and clean it with some rubbing alcohol if I didn't want it on there anymore but that's what I did I cut a little swatch shape and then I would take my ink add it on and then um, stamp it onto the blocks that I had of the different kinds of ink. Now, um, sometimes you'll get a, a company that has a whole bunch of colors and sometimes they're colors like, for example, this one here, this is the um, pigment ink. So that's, um, I found some charts for the pigment inks here. Well, they had quite a few colors, but not all the colors I could find on the chart. So I just added a few from here. I had to look up the names of these colors online. It was a bit of a pain, but I found them and uh, I stamped them onto the thing there. Now, in this case here, for the Brilliance Ink, the Dewdrops and the Versa Magic and that kind of thing, in my head, I always remember them as these teardrop shaped um, ink pads and so I thought it would be kind of neat to make teardrop shaped stamps 
to put into those spots. So I just took a piece of that fun foam, cut it in the shape of a teardrop, and when I st stamped all my teardrop shaped ink pads, I just did it with a teardrop. Now you wouldn't have to use a color, you wouldn't have to make a swatch thing like this. It's just kind of handy to do if you like. Um, you could just use a rubber stamp or something, but it gives a real good um, solid impression. You get a good impression of what the colors look like. Now with the alcohol inks, um, <laughs> they bleed out really fast. Um, I had printed out the chart and then I put a drop of ink on it and it just bled out really quickly. So if you're going to do that, you have to be quite careful. Um, I could have put some alcohol ink on my um, glass mat here and then used a stamp like this instead. That would have been a little bit more control. One company I found is just brilliant is Ranger. Now Ranger has a really wide range of different products like the Adirondack inks, the archival inks, vintage patina inks, and look what they did. They made charts, blank charts, a whole bunch of them, all the Tim Holtz Distress Ink, the Distress Stain. And so all I had to do is go to one spot on um, the Ranger site and find all those printables. He even has them for the Distressed Paint. And I found, I printed them up, but I haven't needed them yet. So I didn't want to fill out my planner. But the um, they have the ones for Dina Wakely Media Paints the Wendy uh, Vecchi embossing powders for stickles, for dilution paints, the ink sprays, the Adirondack color wash. These guys are smart. <laughs> and um, they've got all, so you can see their branding and everything and all the colors. And so you don't have to look them up. You don't have to write them down. You can just print them out. Now, usually they're, when you find a color chart online, when you print it out, it's gonna land as an eight and a half by 11 size. This is in fact the same Copic um, color sheet, um, just an eight and a half by 11. So I had to size it down for my planner when I put it in here, I'll flip back to it so you can see the difference. Here's the size here. Um, my particular printer, you can just choose A5 size and then um, that will fit into these pocket pages quite nicely. Um, I also found out that um, an A5 size is approximately 73%. So if you print your page at 73%, you're going to get uh, this shrunk down to that size. That works just great. Um, and so as far as the pocket pages and things, if you want to put them in pocket pages in a planner, um, there's a couple of companies that do the six by eight size pocket pages. Um, there's the snap or the simple stories snap pockets and the project life, um, pockets. They both fit in a, um, a five planner, though they're slightly wider than the a five size. So they're six by eight. They'll work just fine. Um, you will have to probably punch extra holes to put in here, but the those ones, both of those pocket pages have these two holes line up perfectly. And then you just have to punch the outer two on each set. So it's real doable and um, you can do, uh, put them in there. No problem. You just have to hand punch them out. And then another thing I just recently did was um, I made a sampler sheet for my washi tape. Um, <laughs> washi tape is another one of those things where you can have a whole bunch of different patterns and sometimes it goes on sale and then you think, oh, do I have any of that? And you don't want more of the same one unless it was a total favorite. Um, so I just took a ripped off, I put a, well, first of all, I took a piece of cardstock, cut it the size to fit my pocket page, put a cute little uh, colorful label at the top. And then I just ripped out little sections of washi tape and stuck them on there on both sides. Um, and the cool thing about washi tape is it's, it's very repositionable. So if I run out of this particular color, I can just take it off of there. And then I know that I don't have that tape anymore, or I could move this to a spot where I said, you know, I just desperately need more of that particular one. So, um, that's the nice thing about washi tape. You can make these, um, 
little cards. Now, I couldn't find um, printout sheets online and I haven't had time to make some charts up myself. So I've, there are going to be a bunch of products that I don't have printouts for yet, like the Glimmer Mist. So I just hand wrote them out just so that I wouldn't double buy them. And of course I've got walls of product, all kinds of glue, all kinds of um, paints and pens and uh, Pearl X powders and glues and glitters. So eventually I can put it all into this system. Now if I have everything I owned in a binder, I may just have to have a separate binder altogether. Um, and not include it in my planner or have some that I swap out in and out. But I thought you would enjoy seeing that, how I've got things set up for myself and maybe it'll work for you. You can modify it however you like. Do it in a great big three ring binder if you want or just have a little tiny booklet that you can throw into your purse that you've just written down all of your different pens and inks and colors and things like that. That way you're not wasting your money buying stuff that you already have. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you. And if it was, do let us know if you like this video. And if you've got any cool tips or things that you would like to share, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. And if there is something you don't know yet, um, and you've looked through all of our videos and we don't have a video on it yet, but we do have tons, so make sure to check those. You can leave your comment or suggestion or whatever you want in the comment section below. All right, so we'll see you next time and bye for now.